Well, I was talking about uh, how you know how actually my device devices are set up. How what kind of setup do I have at this moment at my table? At the same time, uh, what are the things you know which you which will differ from setup to setup? Like every every PLC would have some kind of uh, uh, you can really have have a serial cable talking to it. Yeah. RS-232 base, you know, cables, since it is, it is uh, not differential, you can't really run it for long. Uh, then you have RS-485, which is differential, and, and, and it can really perform really well, and even under noisy environments, and you can really pull about a kilometer of, you know, cable connecting different devices that 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 gives you lots of uh, flexibility in terms of you know how close the devices physically are and and uh, one more thing that uh, that differs plc to plc uh, is is how uh, how a modbus address really maps to uh, really maps to uh, 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 the 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 variable inside your PLC program. So you must have you know for for writing HMIs you know you, your your PLC you know must be programmed. Yeah. So I'm assuming that you've got a PLC which has been programmed, and and I'm just sharing with you that that zero seven KR fifty one I believe they call it a one controller. From ABB, uh, it's it's a medium-sized PLC, and and this this is an FBD. So once this FBD is written written already, then you can really write an HMI for it, and and how these addresses really map with uh, with 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 corresponding Modbus address, because this variable may have a different you know cycle star may have a different uh, address, and and well. You really need to know for the PLC you have that how the variables of that particular uh, that particular uh, uh, PLC maps to to Modbus address. I mean, this is this is PLC specific. You really go to your uh, you know system engineers, you know system engineering guys maybe, and maybe to the system house and get the document for that PLC so that you can know that okay if it is input you know i64.04 what is the really what is the real yeah, modbus address for it so this is something that varies uh, if if this is memory bit 000.03 how does it really that address in in the PLC program how does it really map or translate to a Modbus address. So that is something that varies PLCs to PLC and that's one thing that you need to know. And then once you have that information, yeah, if you are say using say Siemens some S7 200 or maybe S7 300 or 400 model PLC, then, then you got to have that information that inside your uh, ladder logic, inside your uh, say or APD, whatever you write, it doesn't even matter your, your, what language you're using. It could be STL. So how does these you know memory addresses translate to corresponding uh, uh, Modbus address? Once you have that information with you. Uh, there's nothing else that 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 you would need. So from here on, uh, we'll try to take a look. Uh, I hope uh, I've not missed anything. From here on, uh, I'll try to take a look at, at at the document itself. Basically, uh, or shall I start with my? Okay, okay. Let's 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 take a look at this one. This is this is the official Modbus document. Yeah. And uh, the, they have, uh, let's see from top, yeah, yeah. Actually, Modbus has, has uh, there are 
two types of protocol one is that ASCII ASCII is something not very popular we'll be using ATU ASCII has a full set of characters means all 127 7 bits are, are occupied and and RTU has only hex numbers so hex, hex it, it's it's pretty yeah I, I find it RTU in fact Modbus when you mean Modbus you mostly mean Mod, Modbus RTU you can still do RTU provided master has implemented it but we will we will be taking uh, Modbus RTU in our case then uh, field handle yeah LRC nobody uses these days uh, we'll be using CRC for error checking it's mainly uh, CRC is like imagine you are you are sending few bytes from your laptop or PLC uh, to the PLC and imagine you've got a, some you've got some interference over your RS-485 cable or maybe if it was an say any protocol doesn't really matter if it was a RS-232 cable you could have interferences on it you could have hardware issues and somehow some of the bits get changed during transportation so what CRC cyclic redundancy check does is that they apply a, a formula uh, which we'll see later you know in detail so they apply a formula on the data they are really sending and then then master knows that formula in advance so master and slave they both have that knowledge of the formula and then the master itself and the receiver decide device itself applies the same formula again and then checks whether the result was same what slave got or what the other side of the, of the device got and if they both found to be okay then they assume that yeah there was no corruption of data while transportation over the wires and if it's not then yeah it's dropped well uh, 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 there are few functions actually modbus uh, data control functions are the functions which uh, which 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 uh, master actually implements so you will probably have a master which have has these set of functions uh, already implemented inside it so and we'll be writing you know we'll try to be using these functions once we go ahead uh, zero one is the code for uh, read coil status coil is uh, a bit which you can set and also you can read so it's a read write bit 02 function is for read input status input uh, 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 02 is for uh, digital input so this is digital uh, output that means you can <coughs> both read and write to digital uh, digital output bits this is for uh, read input status mean it comes from field you can really you don't really have you know control over it so some outside device write this inside the PLC and then you can really read it meaning you, can, you cannot really set your bit yourself you know device will throw some error you can really uh, read these bits so whether the limit switch was on or whether some sensor was activated or not yeah. holding registers are uh, could be modbird registers by default they are 16 bit wide so holding registers are read write this is typically your analog output which you can read and also write and input registers are typically <clears throat> you know these are these are like devices uh, which are which is which are typically called to be analog inputs uh, in, in PLC world or in industry world yeah you can really set these values these values would typically come from some 4 to 20 input device uh, like like if you have seen the first video where I was uh, shooting my setup I've got a I've got a module which is analog input module and uh, this is a 4 to 20 module uh, and it is it's got a it's interface with an RTD it's interface with an PT100 sensor which which is wired to and uh, you know PT100 to, to 4 to 20 converter and then converter sends analog inputs which is 4 to 20 milliamps to the PLC and that's that's how PLC comes to know that what the temperature at the PT100 at that moment so you can really set this temperature I mean it doesn't make uh, any sense you setting analog input values so actually the external device in 